As a bike mechanic for many years, we have worked on beautiful gyms like this over and over, day in and day out. Well, when it comes to these particular bikes, sometimes we come across little rusty bits. Well, after all these years of working on bikes, still trying to figure out the best solution to clean this easily and quickly without spending too much time or just replacing, trying to refresh these parts. So, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks here and try to come up with a great solution. Guess what? With your general cleaners, and I got some sample parts to try to remove the rust, and you guessed it, I'm gonna try to use the ultrasonic cleaner magic to do so after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take Scary How to Use, one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy, and uh, we are going to be doing a sample test of using your general products that you actually have in your home to kind of clean rust off of parts. Yes, this has always been a challenge in the cycling industry as well as many others, so gonna be using pretty much your simple stuff, right? Well, Purple Power, uh, which I use on quite a bit of bike cleaning, but it's usually diluted form. I wanted to see what it's gonna do to the actual bike parts themselves by removing rust. I use Simple Green quite often and also Sonic Cleaner anyway diluted, but I'm going to use a concentrated version of trying to clean off the rust. As well as some lighter methods out there using baking soda and also your white vinegar. Well, I've seen some of these tests done with Ultrasonic Cleaner and the results are not the most favorable on a lot of them. But if we can just remove some of the rust, at least to make it a little bit cleaner, and make it a little bit better, that'd be a game changer. Not necessarily gonna always remove rust from chains. Well, I'm gonna use a chain in this particular sampling and test because this chain is super rusty and well, lo and behold, it has all these nicks and crannies. So I'm gonna try the chain matching up with also, well, saw all parts are stainless steel and aluminum on bikes so you'll have some like springs they'll have rust some bolts too not a great example here's another one um, actually has some rust on the nut portion here and also the back side this is what i'm going to try to use by a sampling of different ones of these chemicals to clean these rust parts or at least get a lot better and I have not tried this before, so I've just used Simple Green on the majority of the stuff that I've cleaned to get ready, but I've not played with vinegar, baking soda, or purple power direct in the actual ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaner, as you may know, has a little micro explosion in the small bubbles using kind of like a speaker effect of high frequencies to break all this down. Well, the addition to what helps this ultrasonic cleaner and most others out there is the heating element aspect of this. Before the days, we'd have some lubes out there, I'm not gonna say the names, but they'd act like a plastic and bond to the actual chain and cassettes. And we'd use those traditional chemical solvent tanks and scrub and try to get that stuff off. It just smeared around like toothpaste or peanut butter it would not come off. Well, the ultrasonic cleaner with that heating element, take those really stubborn pre-lubes, old lubes, and grease, blows it right off with the heating, with a combination with a, a light degreaser. Well, let's try to do it with a more intense degreaser on rust parts and see if it kind of pulls it off. In addition to, I don't want to clean parts and get the rust off and kill the finish. That's just not gonna work. So we're gonna do a lighter version I know there's like an acid out there it would take rust right off. Yeah, but it's going to kill and also the, the bushings and all of that. We want to maintain a happy medium of cleaning without damaging. Let's see what we have for, let's see what happens after we do this. So it's basically going to be pretty simple. I have hot water in the tank right now. It doesn't have anything. I'm going to be using bags to isolate the pieces of chain and the actual brake caliper to match with it. And I'm going to put it in there with a particular straight chemical from Purple Power, Simple Green, 
baking soda with a mixture of vinegar. I'm going to try that, see what kind of explosion of a mess I have there, and then just straight vinegar. I've heard the, the baking soda water paste might work, so we may do a separate one on that too, uh, just to see if we can get these rust little bits to come off. Again, I'm just trying to find something that strips the rust off for the most part without damaging any of the actual surface of the actual uh, part itself. Um, the covering, the aesthetics, also the functional, mainly the functionality. But obviously we don't want to throw in a whole bunch of parts in a cleaner and come out super ugly or look, you know, damaged in the sense from the coating because that's just not going to work for any kind of detailing on the actual bike. When you're looking at the automotive industry, when you're taking, you know, now, part engine parts and so forth. That's a whole different beast. Those are under the hood. Yeah, it's not like you're going to put a hood of your car in an ultrasonic cleaner and try to clean it. So, a little bit different, you know, different situation when you're looking in the bike industry. So, without further ado, let's dive into this. Closer look of what we're looking at in the sun. This is actually the rust chain, all on the same chain. So, the consistency should be the same. You can see where I've actually cut the chain and it's shiny. So, it's just basically surface rust. And each one of these brake calipers has their own version of rust on them. So we're going to take a look at those and compare them after we do the treatment. So let's dive into this. All right, here we go. So I numbered these, but I guarantee these numbers are just going to basically fade off. So we will do basically one at a time and kind of massage it. So we're going to get the chain and that brake caliper in there. And also another note on the bottom of the tank, the closer it is to the ultrasonic base, the better the vibration. So um, we're gonna just do probably, well, I'll do two at a time and lay them flat. And we'll just do a five minute increment and see what happens. Then we'll do another five minute increment on top of that. And obviously these liquids are at room temperature. So that being said, uh, they'll need to warm up a little bit with the actual fluid that's in the tank itself. So there's our vinegar. And here's our baking soda. And let's see what happens here. So it explodes with vinegar. So you got a nice exploding mess in there, but it'll calm down and become a liquid. Need more vinegar. I want to get that chain in there. Ooh, that's like being a lab rat. Let me see how it just kind of soaks inside. So that's what we're going to get on that one. It should be enough liquid. And here's a trick. So when you're putting this, smerging this into the tank of water, you want to leave a gap of air until when it goes in. So it vacuums up with the pressure of water, then you can seal it good when you drop it in the tank. So let's do that. All right, we've got our hot water mixture. Now hold the top of the bags up. I guess we don't need this for this particular exercise. And I open it up a little bit to vacuum the air out. Let's just see how it really vacuums that up. And I want that to be as flush as possible on the bottom, like so. And we're gonna give it, ooh, that's hot. Five minute increments. Well, I have those started. I'm just gonna go in and Get the other ones all ready to go. And this one we're gonna do with simple green. Add that there. And remember, you don't need to you know, fill it up all the way because when you vacuum that air out, you're gonna get that liquid's going to cover a majority of it. So, got that. And last but not least, try the purple power. Yeah. 
So three and four are ready to go. So we've gone through our first cycle with five minutes. And we're right about 46 Celsius. You can see the vinegar starting to brown up a little bit. I had to open this up a little bit here to release the gases of the baking soda. Let's see if uh, that continues. It doesn't seem like a very much volume of liquid, so I might put a little more baking soda in this and to give it more of a, a full coverage. And here we have simple green. Obviously, it's green as can be. We're going to vacuum that up. And I have enough space in here in the 15 liter to uh, accommodate realized for these. So, and I got the purple power. Oh, it's like a colorful treat of heaven in here. So I'm gonna refresh this like so. Let's uh, see, well, this will be the first five minutes for purple power and simple green, but straight vinegar, this will be Going in the 10 minutes and the baking soda vinegar mixture is going to go for the 10 minutes too. Let's see what happens. Just for giggles, I'm going to do one with just hot water. I had an extra brake caliber and chain. I'm just going to see what happens in just straight hot water, what it does to this. Yeah, I definitely have room for five. Okay. And plus, I'll lower the water temperature. All right. All right. So, 10 minutes of straight vinegar. We're definitely seeing some removal of the rust. The question is if I'm going to see the removal of the rust off the brake spring and not. It looks like it's working pretty good. Second one is our baking soda mixture vinegar. That seems like it's cleaning something, but not as nearly as dark. And I do have that opened up. So let's out the gas. Got purple power turned into more of a dirty purple. Oh. You can see it's just eating the anodization off of the brake, which is probably not a good thing. Here's the straight water. It's not like it's done anything. I didn't expect it to. Then you have simple green. It looks like it's removing some of it. Was it taking off the tarnish or the paint of the brake? caliper. We'll check that. So let's give it another blast. All right, we have at three cycles for the straight vinegar. That seems to be looking kind of nice and dirty. <laughs> I guess that's what we want. And that brake spring, huh, starting to look, look pretty clean. And here's our baking soda mixture. Doesn't seem to be, seems like the baking soda has neutralized the vinegar ability to clean, that kind of thing. And here's our purple power. It's setting up and you can see it's starting to take away the varnish off of the actual brake caliper. So if I was going to do something with that particular anodized, well, we'll see with the brake pad covers. Just straight water, not really done anything. Maybe a little bit. And the simple green is so dark, I can't tell. But looking at this, it looks like this rust is still there for the most part. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, I think we're at a good level right now. We're going to take the baking soda one out and the vinegar one out. Rinse those out and inspect. These are still five minutes behind. So 
We'll put those in there and let them do their thing. And we'll rinse these out with water and see what they look like. All right, we're at the 15 minute mark on these guys. Yeah, dirty purple, <laughs> which took off the tarnish off the brake. That's like that black anodize. Uh, that brake, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. That is done. All right, we got the purple power, which is now like a dark purple forest green color. And the straight water actually is starting to uh, color a little bit. So, all right, let's get these all cleaned, rinsed off, and do the review. <laughs> okay, here we have it 15 minutes for all five samples, four with chemicals, one with straight water. The reason why I wanted to do straight water, I wanted to see what the ultrasonic cleaner does just by itself with just a liquid of water. As we know, water it has nothing in it and it's not going to cause anything except for movement of the actual bubbles. So here we go with a straight vinegar. We got the rust still there and it kind of has this tarnished look. And with chains, bicycle chains, you're looking at a couple different materials, right? You got your steel and then you got a roller that's more polished. So that being said, it's still, I want to say it didn't really remove very a lot of rust. Some of it you can tell uh, on the actual bits, maybe a little bit on the spring, a little bit on the bolt. Um, yeah, so the question would be if it was in there longer, would it remove all that? bits without compromising you know the bushing and also the functionality going to the baking soda vinegar mixture uh, what we got is still same amount of rust but the rollers on the chain are more polished the rust is a little bit lighter and looking at the fluid it doesn't look like it has very much contaminants in it versus the vinegar looks like it definitely drop some of it inside there okay simple green well we're down to i'd say forest green and this is the chemical i use a lot of times by cleaning the train directly and you can see why that it's really etching off the rust and the rollers are super shiny so at some point this chain will i would say be pretty close to rust free i mean you can see how intense that rust was on the chain but looking at the small parts, what I'm trying to accomplish originally is get these little, you know, rust pits out of the way. I mean, maybe I can use a, a wire brush to help act, try to get some of that stuff off. But it's almost virtually impossible to get like the internal portions of it by just physical scrubbing. So I would say eh, some success cleaned up a little bit. Not, not 100% though. And looking at purple power, um, turn it to a dark purple fluid um, liquid there. This actually made it look more orangey. <laughs> the rollers are shiny. Uh, maybe removed a little bit, but not as much as I would hope. And this was that color. So, um, or maybe a little more tarnish, but this actually ate the tarnish off the actual caliper, which you can see a little bit of left inside there, discoloring it. Um, didn't really do anything to these brake pad cylinders, but they are a lot lighter. Um, so as in the rust goes, well, maybe the rust is gone. Well, no, no, we still have some rust on this bolt here and Took it off of the spring, which would probably the chrome coating of it protected it a little bit more. And a little bit of that bolt there, but that bolt is still nasty, rusty. And looking at our straight gauge test, oh yeah, this was this color. And <laughs> took that tarnish right off. Uh, straight water, well, you can see the spring is still got the tarnish on there um comparably so they didn't do anything the water did not and looking at the chain um kind of looks the orangish as the well if you look at the 
simple green, it did take off some of the material or some of the rust. This didn't really do anything other than that. Let's check review. Well, the learnings is none of them did it 100%. Yeah, the straight acid would eat that all off, but it probably would eat all off the metal material. So I'm trying to still find that happy medium in between. Um, I would say probably vinegar is probably the best. Maybe go a little bit longer um, and hopefully it kind of makes that go away. Um, maybe do some brushing of it. But other than that, the rust in, in the pits and areas of the spring is still there. I think the best one was the purple power, but I don't want to <laughs> lose my finish. I mean, I guess if it's that, but you got to wonder what it's going to do to the the plastic bit here for engaging. So you wanted, wanted something that's like less aggressive but effective of getting the rust off. Well, needless to say, I think the only way to make that rust completely go away is getting a new caliper, <laughs> which is kind of a bummer. But in this particular situation, those calipers for road bikes currently are not that expensive you can find a good used set somewhere around 40 to 60 bucks on ebay so that's really and these are kind of the knockoff um, tech drawer ones that are replaced from bikes i've had before either mainly because of the rust uh, because they just looked ugly and i'm just not able to um, revive them and you know the taking most of the best material so far is what I've been using for a lot of the parts cleaning is simple green and actually you can tell right there you're starting to get some shininess back uh, to that particular chain so for the chains yeah the chains and cassettes I put this in straight simple green all the time and ultrasonic cleaner in the bag or you can use a jar glass it'll go through the glass or the plastic as well and it has the best chance of like really stripping out all those little greasy bits out of the chains and cassettes. Um, but for the parts, I usually do a delusion, uh, delusion, diluted version of one to, one to six or one to seven, one part, simple green, six to seven parts of water, not to be so aggressive um, to, you know, eat away at some coatings and so forth. The temperature itself definitely is gonna be a beneficial factor um, to cut through any of that grease and so forth and gunk, but really doesn't seem like it has had any kind of effect on rusty bits, um, especially on the parts that you're just trying to get to. And you know, usually when I do uh, ultrasonic cleaning, I will re-lube areas where rust will appear. I do rust uh, lube the bolts with a um, tri-flow, so a light superior lube. What that does, I put it on the pivots, also the springs, and also the, where I've noticed there's rusting on other bolts on other you know, bikes that I work on. When I put everything back together, first it actually gives it more life, um, actually functionality, in addition to it gives it a little bit of a coating of rust protection. Needless to say, this is, will not last up for like rainstorms and snowstorms on in. So if you're in an area where it's high humidity and so forth, you need to keep reapplying. Lighter you know, area elements or <laughs> area uh, elevations like ours, which is pretty dry. We don't have to lube it as much. We don't have as much of a rust issue, but we still do prevention just in case you get caught in the rain and so forth and put your bike away without drying it off. All right, well, my conclusion is there's no conclusion. <laughs> um, hopefully you got some information out of it, some teachings of the ultrasonic cleaner, how to use some of these bits, and just basic, you know, your simple chemicals without going too really expensive. Um, Vinegar is a couple bucks for jugs. Baking soda is the same, it's not too expensive. Simple green is about 10 to 12 bucks for a gallon. Same thing for Purple Power. You can get them all from Amazon, all, as well as Walmart. Well, any, pretty much any store near you. So I wanted to use more basic household um, acquiring products to be able to do the test first. Um, if you have come across something that's worked really well without damaging parts, feel free to you know, add to the community below by adding a comment. Um, hey, we're on the journey of trying to clean and fix parts and all that kind of thing and using the tools that we have. And Ultrasonic Cleaner does a wonderful job on cleaning a lot of parts and getting a lot of those bits. It's just, um, it's just, it's, rust is stubborn, man.
That's the conclusion. Rust is just rust. Ugh. Without scraping and, and filing it all off. Yeah, that's what we're kind of left with. Well, thank you for hanging out with me in the garage. Until next time, have a wonderful day.